Hi everyone, my name is Philip Agnew. I work at Brandwatch. You've just had data, data, data thrown at you. It's very data intensive. I promise this won't have too many data points you have to scribble down, but there will be a little bit. Um, we're kind of crossing over. We've just had this fantastic deep dive into web analytics, and now we're going to have a little look at your industry in social, how people talk about you online, how they engage with your brands, um, and some hopefully potentially interesting insights around that. But before I dive into it, I want to just quickly explain social listening and, and what we do and what we are. It's kind of a new industry and just explain why we're here. Best way to do that is just to dive back 35 years. There was no internet for all of you um, who might not remember. There were only 130 websites in total. Uh, I'm sure Jellyfish alone have more websites than that. And 15 years ago, YouTube, Facebook, Tumblr, Instagram, those channels that we use every day, they weren't around. But the, one of the best ways to explain why social listening is so important at the moment is this picture. So this was taken 10 years ago in the O2 Arena, just down the road. Can anyone see anything interesting in this picture? Is there anything that potentially stands out? No one's holding their phones. What a good, you guys are switched on. You've had your coffee. That is correct. Do you want to see what a concert looks like today? It looks like that. <laughs> Okay, it's not the O2 Arena, it's uh, Jimmy Kemmel in LA, but this is the experience we've all had if we're sitting 15 rows back. And the reason is because everybody wants to share their experiences online. Everyone wants to tweet, post, periscope, stream. We're all desperate to share our experiences online, and sometimes we don't even feel like they're really real until we share them. How many people have been on a holiday recently and just been desperate to get that post up on Instagram? I know, I have. Um, but all of this creates a huge amount of data, a huge volume, variety, um, and velocity of data online. That's 197 Reddit posts per second. It's 793 Instagram posts per second, 6,000 tweets per second, and the giant 52,000 Facebook likes per second. That's millions since I've started talking today. All of it equals something that we at Brownwatch like to call quite interesting. It's the largest searchable archive of human thought. Never before has there been this much interest, um, this much of a collection of people's interests, their desires, their thoughts, their opinions, their views on certain topics. And we can use all of that to understand things about your industry. So earlier this week, I dived into Brownwatch and I got a list of all of your company names and I put all of them in there. And I've measured all of your conversation over the last year and I've tried to pick out some insights around your brands. Um, so to start with, some stats. How many people mention you online? You're almost at half a million mentions. For a kind of small to medium sized industry, that's pretty good. What's outstanding is how positive your audience are. You've got an incredibly positive audience base. When they talk about you online, they're delighted, they're interested, and they're sharing really positive sentiment. Um, and I'm gonna dive into a little bit later about how that's really different from other industries. And you've got great PR as well. You've got a decent proportion of news sites, um, BBC, CNN, kind of PR networks are really engaging in your industry at the moment. That's a big opportunity for you guys. You're up and coming, but PR are really interested in what you're doing. Quick overview of stats. What can we learn right now? Let's kind of dive into it. So number one, I know the stat you all care most about, obviously, is, is what emojis are most linked with your brands. And here they are. Um, well, this is really interesting. So the emoji, sorry, I'm pointing to this screen, but on the kind of left of the fingers crossed is the joy emoji. This is the most popular emoji on the planet. It's used almost two times more than any other emoji. And typically, every industry I look at has that as the number one emoji. It's not for you guys. Number one emoji is fingers crossed. I really think that showcases something about how your consumers talk about you online. They're excited. They're, they're anticipating what's in their box. That is the real value of your brand. It's that fingers crossed emoji. When you're thinking of your next campaign, that's a great one to chuck in. Um, also, hardly any negative emojis. If you look at the airline industry, it's very, very different. <laughs> you're lucky to get love hearts. You're lucky to get smiley faces. You are likely to get planes, funnily enough. But you're way more likely to get more of these, these, these crying, very upset emojis that are typically represented with their brand. So I clicked in, I thought, well, why is that there? And actually, it's kind of a positive use of that emoji. So the example here is, if only smell of vision was a thing, the smell of this coffee beans taste, um, smells unreal, devastated, my grinder hasn't arrived yet. So it's a positive with a negative, and that's really the only time <laughs> negative emojis come into your conversation. Really, really positive interactions your consumers are having with you online. How's the conversation grown? I find this really interesting. It almost links directly with what Becky said earlier. 
relatively good growth over time, some peaks and troughs based on maybe stuff like politics and, and offline consumer, consumer discussion. But look at what happens in November. What, look at what happens in the run-up to Christmas. This is your guys' time to really make sure you're getting your campaigns ready. You've just missed it for this year, but next year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, the run-up to Christmas is undeniably the biggest events in your calendar. So you've got to make sure you're prepared for it. Um, also, genuine increase in your growth as well. It's not likely to see this much of an increase in growth at the moment on social, and it's, it's very unique to your industry. Uh, best day to publish. I always like to do this for people in the industry. If you're releasing a new product, if you're releasing a new box, if you're doing an update, if uh, you've got a new campaign launching, what day should you do it on? Based on the average of all of your brands, the day your consumers are most likely to engage with you is Friday. Friday is a good day for you to launch your products, which is very unique. Again, it's not a typical day. We would usually say to brands, Monday and Tuesday, that's where you have the whole week to build off your success. But Friday is the day engagement is high. And I kind of think that's because people are excited to get their boxes in the weekend, potentially. Maybe that's the reason. Uh, sentiment, so we got into this earlier, how positive is your audience? It's really positive. So an 84% positivity for emotional conversation is really, really high. It's good. It means when you're talking to your customers online, your tone of voice can be very upbeat, it can be very positive, and it won't jar with what your consumers are saying. There's a slight increase in negative sentiment towards the end of the year, which is interesting, maybe some teething problems with the amount of new growth in the industry. But let me just give you some comparisons to how this compares across other industries. You guys are the number one industry that we did our analysis on in terms of positivity. You beat hotels, you beat apparel, which is Nike, Adidas, you beat beer. I mean, if you beat the beer industry, you've done really well. And I was saying this to someone at work earlier, and he goes, yeah, well, a subscription box doesn't give you a hangover. And I said, yeah, that's quite a good point. So well done on not doing that. But you've, you've got an incredibly positive audience. Find ways to use that in your communications. Um, who are your audience? Again, this is going to resonate with some stuff that Becky said earlier. Uh, this is an analysis we did of all of the people communicating about your brands online. There's a majority female, but again, a small increase in rise of male um, conversation as well, which, which is showcasing the same thing. That seems to be a high growth area in the industry. What are they interested in? Really interesting dynamic. Family and parenting, food and drinks, books and sports. That are the main interests that your consumers have when they communicate with you online potential ideas there, potential things you can collaborate on and work on. How many of you, how many sports subscription boxes are out there? Or how many boxes like around hygiene cater for the sports market? It's probably not thought about that much, but so much of your audience is interested in that part of the market. It's potentially a massive opportunity for you guys. Uh, and then finally, where in the world are these communications coming from? I was having a chat with one of the guys here today. He was saying that the United States has always been the number one for subscription boxes, and that resonates with us at the moment. UK is really high as well. Canada, that's really interesting. So this conversation hasn't been weighted for population, and we hardly ever see Canada come into the top five or top ten. They're, they're number three at the moment. Even though their volumes are fairly small, they've got a lot of conversation happening about them online. If you are breaking into the American market, have a think about North America, Canada as well. They're clearly interested. Common complaints, this is always interesting to look at. What are the things people complain about? Um, we had a look at some of the main complaints that were coming up online, and there's sort of three main things we, we took out of it. The bottom two are teething problems. They're almost not your fault. Late delivery and broken products. It's the sort of thing you can just blame on UPS or <laughs> FedEx or whoever you want to blame it on. The top one I found really interesting. People, a lot of people, the main complaint around your industry is they don't enjoy the contents, the products in the box. They, they get the box, they open it, and they're frustrated because it's a repeat of the thing they had last week because it's not actually what they wanted. It's not personalized enough to them. And I think that's maybe the number one challenge you have for your industry. If people like Amazon are coming into it, the, the ability to get really personalized, to offer something that the consumer really wants at a time that they really want it, could potentially be the difference between a multi-million pound company and a bankrupt company. And I try to think if social would ever let you answer that. And I've come to the conclusion that it might. It might be able to help you. And, and this is how it's, it's on me. So <laughs> if you use my social profiles, if you chucked my Twitter channel and my Instagram channel into Brandwatch and just measured my conversation over time, which you can do pretty easily, this is what it would reveal. It would reveal pretty quickly that I've been going to craft beer uh, companies recently, been going drinking a lot of beer, no surprises there, um, but it reveals it in real time. So this is something I did last week. You can put craft beer into my box for the next week. Very personalized, expertly delivered in real time. Um, I'm training for a half marathon, but my shoes are awful and they don't fit and they're falling apart. 
maybe you could put some blister plasters into my box this week. How interesting that you could actually create a box that isn't specific to a specific industry, like food and beverages or fashion, but actually specific to a specific consumer. Um, I'm trying to drink more tea over coffee, which I failed at outside, but I'm trying to reduce my caffeine levels, so I want to try more types of tea. What could you do? Chuck some really nice tea into the box as well. And finally, I tried to do Veganuary. I wrote about this quite a bit on my social profile. You'll also notice that I didn't really succeed very well. I struggled, so maybe the final thing you put in my box is a nice big steak. Maybe not, I don't know. <laughs> but the idea here, it's a bit jovial, it's a bit novel. The idea here, I think, is quite interesting. There's never been more data about your consumers available online. A lot of the data about your consumers is public and anonymized. Could you get to a stage in the future where you actually offer somebody a box, you send somebody a box based on what they've been talking about, based on what they've been engaging with, and actually it's really super relevant to them? Maybe not right now, but in the future that feels like it could be the next big thing for your industry. Cool. Thank you, everyone.